Okay. Um, yeah, and especially, yes. Uh, and especially when we talk about the summer, um, you know, kids associate summer with, uh, with fun, with being outside. They don't associate it with school and, 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 you know, reading and homework. So if you can integrate reading into their summer, it has to be done in a fun way. Otherwise, they still associate it with something that they have to do because they're forced to at school, because they're forced to by their parents. So, um, so that's really our approach, trying to make reading as, as fun as, as possible. Um, let me move forward. Um, there's, we really believe that there's no, uh, there's no one place that we can read. As you see here, many of our programs, they take place outside. You can be in a little tent, you can be in the forest, you can be in a park. Um, really reading happens everywhere. Um, just go back one. So yeah, it, there's no good moment to read. You know, it's, it's, really, it's really not, uh, it's a lot more broad than I think we, we tend to, to understand generally. So um, again, we wanna, we wanna kind of break these preconceived notions that reading is for school. It has to do with homework. Uh, we're surrounded by words and reading. So, you know, read, reading is everywhere, all right? So how to choose materials. Right. Let's talk about that a little bit. So, of course, you know, depending on your context, where you work, who you work with, uh, the age of the children is super important. Uh, uh, you'd like to you you want to you want to choose uh, age appropriate materials. You want to choose also uh, the right types of books. This is a whole section on its own. I'll I'll tell you about that in a sec in in a second. It's a whole slide on its own. Um, you want to think about the format of what you're doing. Are you doing a group reading in a summer camp or in your community center uh, where you have, you know, 20 kids in front of you and you guys are all going to read the same book? Or is it a smaller group? You're putting kids into groups of two or three or four. So they read a book together. Or is it individual? Is it individual, you know, everybody is, uh, you know, grabs a book and it's quiet time and everybody reads? That's also something to consider. And what you also want to do is solicit all the senses. So um, kids, you know, uh, if they participate in reading using, obviously, their, their sight, their hearing, their, their touch, their smell, it's even possible. There's some books that, you know, uh, that if you like, especially for little kids, like if you touch uh, the book, it, it, it uh, emits a, a smell. So that's kind of fun. Uh, so yeah, think about, think about that uh, when, you, uh, when you choose books. Uh, you also want to consider their interests. I don't know if you're, um, let's say a sports camp, right? Obviously the kids that you have there, or maybe not obviously, uh, but most likely the kids who are in this camp will, will like sports. So, you know, maximize on that. Uh, relevance. Relevance is kind of interesting. So relevance is something like, I like to give the example of, uh, uh, let's say Indigenous Day. National Indigenous Day is 21st of June. So if you're doing a reading activity with your kids on that day, perfect opportunity to talk about the indigenous folks in our country and, um, you know, and see if the kids already know something about it, see if they can share their, uh, their knowledge and ideas and present them with something, with something new. Uh, I think July 9th, if I'm not mistaken, is also Nunavut Day, so that could be something interesting for kids to find out. Um, so yeah, relevance in terms of dates or if something specific is happening, um, you know, uh, if something is happening in the city, uh, so you can, you can think of how you can make a connection between that event and, uh, and what you are, and what you're reading. I don't know, Jazz Fest, you know, you can find books about music, for example, so things like that. And then, of course, representation, right? 
Um, when kids identify with characters that they're seeing in books, they, um, they, they make a stronger connection with what they're reading. Okay, so make sure that, uh, you know, the characters uh, that are present in the books that you choose reflect the kids that you're reading them to. It's actually super, super important. All right. Any questions so far? Is all of this making sense? Can I get some uh, thumbs up or, or maybe some yeses or noes in the chat? All right. Thank you. Okay. Moving right along. Okay, so yeah, this is the slide that I was talking to you about, about the type of kids, kids books. So uh, there's a ton. There's so much selection out there. Sometimes it's a little overwhelming, I find. So we have um, uh, fiction. Uh, obviously, kids love stories. Um, I'd say for older kids, so tweens and teens, fiction that's close to reality is kind of fun so that they, they can make connections to, to, the, real, to the real world. Um, we have fairy tales and legends, so more mythical things, nonfiction books. So this, is, this could be something like a book about space or a book about dinosaurs. There's no story necessarily, uh, but there could be fun facts. There could be super nice illustrations that you can uh, that you can use to talk about the topic. So yeah, uh, children's press. So this would be uh, like books for for younger kids. Also nursery rhymes and poems. Oh, sorry, children's press. Sorry, I had a little glitch there. It's magazines for kids. Uh, so there's again by topic. There's there's tons of things out there, and usually what's good with children's press is that um, it's it usually has like a mix of everything. Like it'll, it'll have a little comic, it'll have fun facts, it'll have uh, it'll have like it'll highlight a project that's happening. So there's there's a lot of different uh, different things going on. So that's always interesting. Get kids you know kind of interested in in magazines. Um, yeah, then you have nursery rhymes and poems, obviously with little kids that always uh, works fairly well. Comic books and graphic novels. This is a great way to get kids into reading because of the images. Uh, you, you know, if you have a kid who doesn't really like reading, choose a comic book that has more images and less text, right? So that, you know, there's a little bit of reading, you can help them with it but they really focus on the beautiful images. And there are so many out there. Um, you have alphabet books. In this visual, I included uh, A's for Access, which is a pretty possible and every uh, festival, it's through the whole <laughs> book, through the whole alphabet. And every letter has to do with uh, something to do with activism. So it's kind of fun. Uh, there's books without text. Great way to get kids to um, create their own story, right? Or interpret the visuals in their own way. And puzzle books, you know, like Where's Waldo, things like that. Kids love looking for stuff. Uh, so this is a great way. Again, you're not necessarily reading, but you're interacting with a book. And if it's fun, if it's pleasurable, if, uh, if it's exciting for them, they're more bound to then go and discover other styles of, of literature. Um, yeah, and it's not just about books. Like you can literally read anywhere. You can read a, uh, like a poster on the street. You can read an advertisement. You can read a street sign. Like reading is really everywhere, all right? So far so good? Everything making sense? Any questions? All right. Uh, yeah, one thing I'm going to mention quickly is that um, if you have access to a library in your, in your area, in your community where you're located, um, don't hesitate to reach out to your local librarian uh, to make a selection of books for whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, this is something we really, really encourage you to do. And this is something that the libraries 
are there for, and the librarians love this kind of stuff. So this is this is a service that we have. So don't hesitate to reach out to them and say like, hey, we're doing, um, we have a week, uh, you know, I don't know, we're working on space. We're gonna talk about space. Can you put together a collection of books for us, 10, 12 books that have to do with space? They can be fiction, they could be nonfiction, uh, there could be comic books, whatever you have. So uh, make a mix and they're happy to do it. So don't, don't hesitate um, to, to do this. Uh, all right. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is uh, do a section, let me just look at the time here, about interactive reading. All right, so what this is, is I'm going to share with you a video uh, of a lady reading, doing an interactive reading, okay? Uh, we're not gonna watch the whole thing. The whole thing is 14 minutes. We're gonna watch the first, I believe it's four and a half or five and a half minutes, and then a few seconds at the end, all right? So I'm gonna show you this video. I'm gonna share it. Hopefully everything works and cooperates. Um, and uh, what I'd like you to do is observe what she is doing, okay? Observe what she is doing. How is she reading? Um, what techniques is she using? You know, anything you can, you can note down to, uh, you notice that makes the reading fun and interesting. Sounds good? Uh, all right, so I'm gonna stop sharing this. Get out of this. Oops. One sec, guys. Oh, yeah, perfect. Get the YouTube link. Here it is. All right, hopefully everything will work. Okay. Share sounds. All right. Let's see if this works. Here we go. Can you see Hi, me? kid. Welcome to Kid Time Story Time. We have a famous book. Dunk. Yes, The Giving Tree. This book is so famous. I have a poster for it. And even the name of the author right there, Shel Silverstein. That's how famous it is that all these characters, maybe you've seen them in other books, are all by him. And this book right here, The Giving Tree, so famous that the publisher even sent me leaves so that you can make your own poet tree. Get it? Wee oui, wee oui, wee oui, wee. Oui. You mean a combination of poem and tree? Yes, Doug the Dinosaur, you got it right. Hey, wait a minute, I don't exactly get it. It's easy. You apparently, I'm told here, you write your own poem to add to the poetry. Uh -huh. And then there are these little holes right here. Uh -huh. And then we could run a string through here later. Uh -huh. And we can string them up with our own poems. But then there are also poems in the front for us to read. Oh, like a craft project. Exactly. But first, we read. You know it. First, we read. Okay. So, let me set aside my leaves here for later. And I want you to think about something as we read this book. I usually just don't tell you to think about anything in particular. I just want you to enjoy it. But this is not just any book. This is a very unique book. And I want you to think about it and then we'll talk about it afterwards. Are you the kid or are you the tree? Which one of these do you want to be? Or neither? What? We'll discuss and I will tell you what I think. But first, I want to see what you think. So, you ready to read the world famous giving tree? Here we go. Okay, here we go. It always starts in the once part, you know, like once upon a time. Once there was a tree. 
Look at that beautiful tree. Nice, sturdy trunk, very leafy. And she loved a little boy. Here he comes. And every day the boy would come. Hey boy! And he would gather her leaves. Woo! And make them into crowns and play King of the Forest! If I was the king of the forest. That's from Wizard of Oz. He would climb up her trunk. Ooh, he's good. And swing from her branches. Wow, he's a daredevil. And, oh, eat apples. Boom, 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 boom. Delicious. I love a tree that gives fruit. And they would play hide and go seek. I see you. I see you. I see you. No, you can't. No, you can't. Yes, I can. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. Pretty perfect. And the boy loved the tree. Oh, and you could see the tree loves the boy right back. He loved the tree very much. Me and T. Look at that. He carved it. Me and T for tree. And of course, the tree was happy. I mean, they were like best friends. But time went by. Oh, look at that. The boy suddenly, what do you think? Maybe a teenager there? And the boy grew older. Oh. Did he bring a friend with him to the tree? Hanging out? Oh, now it's me and T and me and YL. Maybe that's YL. Maybe that's his new love. And the tree was often alone. Hmm. Then one day, the boy came to the tree. Oh, he doesn't look like a boy anymore though. He looks like a grown person now. And the tree said, come boy, come and climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. All the old fun things that they would do together. I'm too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? Well, that's kind of rude. I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I only have leaves and apples. <gasps> Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. Then you'll have money and you'll be happy. Okay, all right. And so the boy climbed up the tree. All right, I'm going to just advance this a little bit to two, two, two. I believe that's not. Nine twenty-five. Well, just let it buffer. Come on, internet, don't let me down here. The end. What did you think? What did you think of the book? I'm dying to know what you thought. See, the reason I asked you, do you think that you are the boy or the tree? Which one do you want to be? Is because it's an important question, I think. It's a beautiful book and it's a classic book. And it's a beautiful book about giving, 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 giving. But do you think that maybe, maybe the boy took too much? Maybe? And the tree gave too much? Can you give too much? I know, it's a crazy thing to think about because we always talk about giving and kindness. Yeah, yeah, we're supposed to give. Yeah, and, and the tree totally gave, Green Bear. Yeah, but, but, maybe, oh, you know, I was kind of sad when the tree didn't have anything left. Exactly, you, you can't take so much that then you've taken everything someone has and never given anything back. All right. But,
Okay, let me just get out of this and put the presentation back. One second. Oh, full screen, where did you go? Here we go, okay. Here we go. So, we saw the first five and a half minutes and then the last minute when uh, the, the, the person reading the book uh, finished the book and then she did a, a minute after. So, what did you observe? And uh, what kind of strategies do you think she used? So you again, you can either unmute yourself and and share. Oops, uh, or you can uh, you can uh, chat. Uh, put put your comments in the chat. What do you think? What did she do? What are your impressions? Okay, she used a, a different tone of voice. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. Anything else? Yep, there's puppets, which is really, really cool. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know if the little bear appeared during the the rest of the the reading, but definitely there was a dinosaur at the beginning. There was a bear at the end. She changed her voices. Um, yes, yeah. She's very enthusiastic. Yes, thank you, Michaela. Uh, using her fingers to, to point to the different parts of the book. Yep, very good. Uh, she asked questions. Yeah, especially the big question at the beginning. Who would you rather be? That's a big uh, kind of an existential question. Uh, took time to show images. Very good. Yeah, this is uh, this is really really great. Where she kind of stops to give a little description of the images. That's really great. Yeah. Anything else? You guys have good ideas so far. All right. Okay. Sounds good. These are yeah. These are great observations. So yeah, definitely all of these things. Uh, the way she was well prepared, she knew the story definitely. I think this is something that she's read. She's read before, and she she seemed to have a, a real ease with how she was delivering it. Uh, I also I personally really like how like she wasn't condescending to the kids. Uh, like she was, I felt like her relationship with the kids was kind of on the same plane. Uh, like just the way she was expressing herself. Uh, she was also including the child in the story from the beginning to end. Yes, definitely. If you emphasize the present of uh, the the presence of the of the child uh, who is there or the children who are there, it definitely draws them in uh, more. So yeah, great observations. Very nice. Um, so. Yeah, the way that we generally look at the way that we like at French for College, we understand reading is we kind of break it down to before, during and after. So uh, she the before part, she talked about the poster as well and the poetry game that went with it. Um, I can't really remember what that was about, but uh, but that's that's something that's, you know, makes the book connected to the outside world uh, as well. Um, she, she asked the big question, right? She, um, you know, she, uh, she got, you know, she, she wanted the kids to the, the, yeah, the kids listening to think about this. So this, this is quite a, an interesting way of doing it. Um, uh, one of the things she, she didn't really focus on a lot, but I, you know, I suggest that you do is you talk about the author, the illustrator, uh, the publishing house and the dedication, uh, if there is one. Uh, and the reason is we do, like, it's important for kids to understand that a book doesn't just, like, exist and just falls out of the sky. 
there's a team of people that put this together. Okay, so it's important for them to know that there's somebody who writes the words, there's somebody who uh, creates the drawings, there's somebody who, uh, there's somebody to whom the book is dedicated, what does that mean? And there's also a publishing house, like somebody who actually makes the book physically, right? Uh, or the printing press or whatever it is. So th these are important things for, for kids to understand. And you don't have to spend too much time on this, but we do, we do feel like it's, it's important to emphasize. Uh, then you have the uh, the during part, and I, the during you guys got like all the right answers: the, the puppets, the voices, the drawings, the tone of voice, the asking questions, the commenting that you do um, you do during during your reading. Um, another way, this is a pretty traditional way of reading a book that that she did, but another way, and this is going to depend on the book that you choose. But sometimes what you can do with certain books is, um, is get kids to actually play the characters, right? Or make the noises or whatever it is that the characters are, are making, right? If there's a lot of kind of that sort of thing going on in a book. So, um, you know, you can, you can get a group of kids to be, I don't know, one type of animal in a book and some other kids to be another type of animal and actually act out what's happening, right? And this makes the book a little bit more like theater and which makes it a bit more fun, right? So this is another little technique. It doesn't work with all the books. Obviously you have to have, you have to really choose a book that lends itself to this kind of uh, interactive reading, but it is something that, that you can do, all right? So that's the during. And then the after, you know, she came back to the to the question and she asked the kids again so what do you think right um you know is it better to be the boy would you rather be the boy or would you rather be the tree um it's it's an interesting sort of reflection that she's asking them to do and then, you know there's more important questions that come out of this reflection so it's a nice nice way of uh of, of doing of doing that reading i actually i really of all the videos that i kind of went through to uh to prepare for this training this is really my favorite one i really like the way that she uh that that she uh she reads this book um so it's it's a really it's a really nice nice positive fun way that also gets the kids to to think about about what is giving and what is it what does it mean what is it how much do you give anyway it's i, I find it really nice um all right any questions about this does everything make sense the before before uh during and after yeah All right, I'll take that as a yes. So yeah, this is just a little recap of what you could be doing, observing, asking questions, making predictions before you turn the page, uh, using props, tones of voice involving children. You guys covered all that, so that's good. All right, time for you guys to try. Now, let me think here, what are we gonna do? You guys are three. Hmm. Okay, Céline, how do you feel about participating a little bit? It's I'll, try, I'll try my best. <laughs> it's it's super simple. This is okay. nothing. This is really nothing. Nothing complicated. Okay. So what we're gonna do uh, in the last little bit of time that we have is I'm gonna split you up in two teams. Uh, in a little breakout room, and I'm going to give you uh, a book, uh, a PDF version of a book. Let me just get out of this. So let's have just so we have Tori and Michaela who are in the same organization. So let's do uh, Tori and Millicent. You guys can be in the same group and Celine oh Celine I can't put you in in a group for some reason but maybe you can place yourself together with Michaela and yeah I think I can I can join the option 
I can join the yeah. room. Yeah, so basically, you can join room two uh, okay. with Michaela. And yeah, so this is what we're going to do. Um, story. I'm going to give you a book. My brother's wheelchair. <laughs> So this is your book, Millicent and Tori. So you can uh, open the link up in your uh, in your browser right away so that when you go into your breakout room, you'll have it. And then Celine and Michaela, your book will be this book. So what is it that we're going to do in our breakout rooms? You guys don't need to read the entire book. It's not necessary. But uh, read maybe the first few pages, I don't know, four, five, six, seven, whatever you have time for. Um, and think of ways that you can animate it, right? How would you read it to a group of children? What would you do? What are the techniques uh, that you would use, all right? This is just for you to, um, just a quick little practice. Okay, here's a book. What would I, how would I present it to, to a group of kids in a fun way? Maybe using some of the techniques that we, that we just saw, all right? Um, the book about space, uh, there's a hole in the galaxy. It's a slightly higher level, so there's more words. So yeah, just read like the first several pages so you get a sense of, of the storyline. All right, sounds good. I'll give you guys about four minutes to do this, right? Perfect. Okay, here we go. Opening all rooms. So you should get a little blue button that says join room uh, one or two. So. <clears throat> all right, we'll just wait for the other team uh, to join us. Uh, you guys did, Michaela and Céline, you guys did the space book, right? Yeah, but I didn't have time to read, but it's okay. And we had uh, an experience with uh, with Michaela's baby. So oh, okay. we saw how it worked, you know, <laughs> the interactive okay. reading. Ellie got really into it. She said solar system, I think. or She said one of the words I said she repeated. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It was interesting to see. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's start with uh, the, the wheelchair book. Let me just share it. Okay. I didn't know what was going on. I lost my partner. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, what do, you, what do you mean? Well, she just left. <laughs> Is she she's still here? Uh not sure. Is, yeah. it, is this is this That's Tori speaking? Tori. Yes. Yeah, so you were with Millicent, right? Right. Oh okay, Millicent, were you in the breakout room? Yeah, it's just it's just um you put us back together. That's all. It's normal <laughs> for me. Oh, to just okay. Hear. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So, okay, hang on a second. Did, did anybody get it? I, I'm a little confused. <laughs> did anybody get a chance to read the book and do the exercise? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay, so Millicent and Tori, uh, how did you, uh, how would you do an interactive reading with my brother's wheelchair? Yeah, so, um, wait. Does Tori, do you want to start, Tori? I can start. <laughs> you could start, please. Okay. Um, so before anything begins, because you want to be prepared, I think like having different colored balloons, because that's how it starts um, for the first like four, three pages. Um, nice. Have, like actually having balloons? Yeah. <laughs> oh, very nice. Um, you know, introduce like my brother's wheelchair, uh, you know, the author illustration, kind of asking the kids right away, like, hi, have you seen like um, anyone in a wheelchair before? Um, you know, kind of just included them with like the first um, picture. Um, we can go to the second page. I think you have it. <laughs> 
Um, and then with this part, like we, I was telling Tori how with the book literally and me standing up, I can just kind of like move my body and go like we and like kind yeah. of come down and maybe include the children to just kind of like have fun too and just stand up and then turn around and like say we. Mm -hmm. um, for the next one, um, um, here's me and my brother on his wheelchair. Everyone who sees us says we are a crazy pair. So kind of getting kids to kind of like make crazy faces also at the same time. Um, and a lot of enthusiasm in your voice. Yeah, reading. Exactly. yeah. Do you want to share what we did for the next ones? Sure. <laughs> He oh. has painted both wheels in blues, yellows, and maroons. And sometimes mm -hmm. just for fun, he also ties balloons. You can share. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, was just, I was just reading to make it easier. Okay, for you. so we would ask, uh, ask them to, uh, if they know which one is the maroon blue or maroon balloon or the red one uh the blue one or the green one and yeah okay and maybe some kids don't know the color maroon right so that could be that exactly there. yeah mm -hmm. good and yeah, then mm -hmm. okay no go ahead go ahead Troy. no i think it was the next page next that we were Yeah, we said that we would um, ask them if they could spot a frog. Um, my brother's very smart. He's got plenty of brains. He helps me across puddles when it rains. So we would ask questions if they were ever, uh, if they ever experienced jumping in puddles and if they thought it was fun. Questions about the rain and the umbrella, if they have an umbrella. And rip it, rip it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Making noises. Yeah, you could even ask them to, uh, what does a rabbit. Uh, That's exactly uh, what Ellie's saying do. now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Yay. laughs> you, you see the frog, eh? Uh, yeah, this is great. Um, like, there, there's, there's something fun you can do on every page, right? Yeah, because, so like, even the horn there, you could ask about the horn. What, what does a horn sound like? And yeah, or you can even bring a horn if you have one. Yeah, um, yeah. No, that's that's great, Millicent. I really also love your idea of uh, of getting some balloons for this for this reading. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, making that connection, like, oh look, there's balloons in the book, and we have balloons. What are the chances of that? You know, so yeah, this is great. Really, really good ideas. Awesome. Okay, so that's, yeah, we can keep going and actually do the reading, but we're not going to do that just to get your, you know, get your imagination going and to to see what kind of options you have. You guys have great ideas. All right. And thank you for uh, taking the lead on that. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right. And then we have this Facebook. There's a hole in my galaxy. Celine and Michaela, what did you, what kind of ideas did you guys throw around? Well, we, we just had time for Michaela to, to read, to, to make yeah. the reading, so we didn't really share the, the ideas, but... Uh, yeah, but we mainly read. Yeah, but it's interesting to see that you can use the, the drawings, I think, uh, you know, maybe to... To ask questions to the kids. But like, uh, now but that the, I'm looking back, sorry yeah. for cutting you off. Sure. Now that I'm looking back, there was a lot of questions that we could have asked before reading, you know? Mm -hmm. Sure. Like what kind of questions could you could you ask before reading? Oh, Bed is running away. <laughs> um, so where are the kids? Uh, where are they going? Where, where do you think they are going? Sorry about my English, by the way. No worries, no worries. Go ahead. Um, yeah, what um, are kids doing in space? Like, yeah. what is this? You know, like it's it's a pretty it's a pretty fun situation, right? Really interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you know, 
the title, there's a there's a hole in my galaxy. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be mention of uh, of a black hole in there, right? So do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? Do you know how big it is? Like, what is it? What happens? Where are they? Uh, so yeah, having that whole discussion is 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 really really interesting. Um, any other ideas? Mm -hmm. We could like start to teach them about the solar system, I guess, and all the planets. Yep, definitely. This is a great way to either introduce this or to reinforce it. If let's mm -hmm. say that's something the kids have been looking at um, during uh, during the week or, or whatever your theme is. Uh, so so yeah, the drawings are really fun. Um, you know, you also have female characters in here, which would be great for for girl readers. You know, like girls are are able to be scientists and discoverers and things like that. And uh, I think that's that's important to to emphasize. Yeah. So there's you know there's there's so many there's so many many things you can do. And as a as an ex extension, so we we usually at Frontier College we call this. Um, uh, like an extension activity um you can i don't know draw your own spaceship uh mm -hmm. learn how to spell black hole right uh depending on what age of kids you have there's a difference between hole as in a black hole and hole as in like a whole cake mm -hmm. right you can talk about the spelling of that sounds the same spelled differently um, you can talk about, or you can, I don't know, the kids could, if we talk about, you know, arts and crafts, maybe they can, uh, maybe they can design their own space suit, right? Like, there's just so many things. Kids love space. So that's one of the, one of the things you can, you can just do a million things with this topic. Um, so yeah, lots and lots of possibilities. Um, yeah, and it's it's a really beautiful and colorful book, so uh, the kids the kids will enjoy the images uh, for sure. All right, so yeah, just some ideas to throw around, just to some options. Um, yeah, any questions? Is this all of this? Does it make sense? I have a question for the books. I saw it. I I I wrote it down. Free kids books. Dot org. Um, when there's levels, does the website explain the levels, what age to what age it's for on the website? Uh, I mean, I, I guess you can also look. <laughs> honest with you, yeah, have a look. I don't, I think they do, but I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, right? And also, you can also just go with kind of like your, um, yeah. Like, like you're like, you know, the kids that you work with, right? So you can say like, you know, I think the kids that I'm going to read the book to, I think they'll enjoy it. Or like this may be like a bit too, a bit too complicated or this, this will be too easy. They'll think we're reading for babies. So, you know, use your judgment as well. And sometimes you'll get a surprise, right? Sometimes, um, sometimes kids will, um, will really enjoy something or what you think is an amazing book, they'll, they, they won't really, they won't really like it. Uh, another thing that we like to emphasize at Frontier College is that uh, reading also doesn't have to be like, ex like you don't have to read the words exactly as they are. You can adapt the story, yeah. right? Um, Cause kids might go off on tangents talking about this, that, or the other. So kind of, you know, adapt yourself to the situation. You don't have to read the book from A to Z exactly like it's written. You know, cut out parts, change things. It's totally fine. Um, you know, again, this this is this idea of like not not forcing kids to 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 do it exactly as it is, and just to be able to interact with with the book in a way that's that's fun and pleasurable for them. All right. I find in my three to five age group, um, I have workshops with kids. Um, mm -hmm. I could pick a book, but like you said, each of them are so different with what their interests are with that book. Like one of them could be wanting to count or the other one wants to, you know, make the noises that it's just so every kid is different. So. Yeah, 
For sure. And you have to manage that dynamic of everybody being different. So, uh, so yeah, definitely you don't have to stick exactly to what the book is for sure. Any questions about any of this? Does, does this, does it make sense? Does this, does this give you like, it's, it's not, uh, they're, they're very, the concepts that we sort of share, they're, they're not, there's nothing really complicated. It's just, you know, think outside the box, um, make things fun. Don't force anybody to read. Um, and yeah, just uh, try to get kids to, you know, to, to have a good time with, with reading and learning. It doesn't have to be anything super complicated. With any kind of reading with children, you got to try to find a way to make it fun and to keep their attention towards the book. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it doesn't matter how silly it is. <laughs> the sillier, the better, really. Oh yeah, that's that's for sure. That's for sure. The sillier, the better. That's definitely uh, that's definitely key. So yeah, um, and and also like again, don't be too hard on yourself if like the, the this great reading that you plan that like it doesn't work out. Um, try to kind of be in tune with what the kids want and how they're reacting and make it fun according to their reactions. All right, that's about it for us. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or you can reach out to Celine or myself uh yeah but that's uh that's pretty much it and i'll send you the presentation yeah. after why sounds good have a nice day all right Bye, guys. Thank you, everybody thank you Thanks. all right take care have a good one